Okay. Um, in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act of the state of New Jersey, adequate notice of this Wednesday, August 10th, 2022 meeting of the Franklin Township Trails Advisory Committee was posted on the township's website and electronically transmitted to the officially designated newspapers indicating that this remote meeting would take place via WebEx at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, August 10th. Okay. Um, go ahead and do call to order. Um, okay. sorry, roll call. All right, Vanessa Jones. Present. Um, Anne Marie Orleski. I see you, Anne Marie. <laughs> uh, Chuck She's Martin. Here. Jim Kolyowski. Here. John Hurling. Here. Uh, who am I forgetting? There's gotta be, am I forget? Am I forgetting anyone? No, we know Mark is not here. Chris is not here. That's it. Yep. Bill Kramer's not here. So mayor Kramer is not here. Yep. Okay. So, okay. So that's all of our members that are here. Okay. Do we have any citizens online? Uh, we do. Yep. Um, so the next thing on our agenda is the approval of the July 2022 minutes. We have a motion. I'll make a motion to accept the July minutes. I'll second it. Any need for discussion? No. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed or abstain? All right. So moved. Um, I'd like to uh, can somebody make a motion to open for public comment? So moved. Second. Okay. And Tara, you said at this time there's there's nobody there, right? No, there is. Um, oh, hang on one second. So first on we have, on the line we have Teresa Thorson. Oh, hold on, Teresa. I think I moved you. Let me see here. Teresa, are you there? I don't know if she can hear me. Teresa, can you hear me? Hmm. Okay, well, we have Teresa there. I just, I don't know. If she, she might just be here to listen to the presentation, but if you can hear me, Teresa, and you have any questions, just uh, send me a message or, you know, we can always bring it back in. Yeah. I'm, I'm muted. It's okay. You can come by. Oh, no, you can just Jim, by. Jim, you're not muted. You're not oh, muted. muted. Okay. okay. My son uh, wants to know whether they can walk by. We also, <laughs> we also have Bill. Hi, Bill. Hello. How are you? Hello. I'm fine. How are you doing? Good. Any comments for right now? Nothing yet. Nothing yet. Thanks. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Um, before we before we go, just let you know my for some reason my internet connection is coming in and out. And the only place I can find it is I'm standing here in my living room with it on one of my entertainment units. So if I move around and you lose me, I'm really, I'm trying to be here, but I just can't stand here for the whole meeting. Yeah. All right. I you bring two chairs over there, Anne Marie? So. Yeah, but then the, the computer needs to be high. Oh, I see. I see. I, I'm in a quandary. Got it. All right, that's all we have on the line for attendees. Okay. Um, so we can close public comment. Do we need to make a, I'm sorry, I'm a, Jim, do we have to make a motion to close public comment or we just move? I, I, I guess make a motion just to cover our bases, just because I think we made a motion to open it. So. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I'm motion to close uh, public comment. I'll make a motion. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, and um, we're going to move on. The uh, next part of our agenda, I'm excited to have Officer Dan Don Flanders uh, with our presentation for trail safety tips. Don, thanks for being here. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me. I I, I have a presentation. I would like to share my screen. Can you um, yes. give me that availability? Absolutely. Hang on one second here. Okay. 
Okay, it should be coming over. <laughs> Okay, do you see my screen? Yep. Fantastic. Okay, so thank you for having me. So my name is Officer Dawn Flanders, and I am a police officer here in Franklin Township, and I'm currently assigned to the Community Relations Bureau. So this is just a quick, um, a little bit about me. So like I said, I have 24 years experience in the police department. I'm currently assigned to the Community Relations Bureau, and for the past, 15 years, I've been teaching prevention to all facets of Franklin Township, whether it be in the school district, the seniors, community groups like this. So this is what I do on a daily basis. So again, thank you for having me. So we're gonna talk about trail safety and then on October 1st, we're gonna have actually a walkthrough at Middlebush Park. So this is just kind of like a formal you know, how to be safe in a park and we're gonna, this is open discussion. So if you have any questions, just ask me. And we all come from different backgrounds and we all come from different, um, you know, experiences when going on trails, whether it be biking or hiking or just walking. So this is gonna be a general overview of how we could best be safe when we do go on trails. So the number one thing that I always like to tell everybody is to go with a buddy. So I also do a lot of presentations to colleges and to high school seniors about going off to college. And one of the biggest things is having a buddy with you. So when you're going on a trail or you're going somewhere, always try to go on a walk or ride with someone. Um, I know that's not always possible, but that's always the best way if you go with somebody or go in a group. Um, before you go on the walk, you wanna hydrate and you wanna drink plenty of water. Because especially on days like today, when it's really hot out, if you do decide to go on a trail, even though the trail is covered, there's still a lot of humidity out there and you could be sweating. So it's important to hydrate before you go and also when you're on the trail. A lot of people don't think about this, but if you are gonna go on a trail or go for a walk, uh, don't get intoxicated or high when going out on a trail. Uh, especially with the legalization of marijuana, um, you know, and adults over the age of 21 sometimes, uh, you know, drink, you can't do it in the parks, but you don't want to go to the parks intoxicated or high. It alters your decision making skills and it can make you trust someone that you normally wouldn't. Mm. Know your route. Let someone know where you are going, a family member, a friend or somebody. That's really important because, you know, things do happen out on trails where people can have a medical emergency or they can get lost. And if you know where you're going, then somebody's gonna know that you're out there. And if you know how long you're gonna be out there, um, that's really important too, because you can call up your friend and say, hey, Tara, I'm gonna be out at Middlebush Park. I'm gonna go around one o'clock. I'm probably gonna stay till two. And then, you know, Tara can know that if she doesn't hear from me at two o'clock, that she might wanna reach out to me and uh -huh. or go to the park and check on me because I'm not getting in touch with her. There could be a problem. Uh -huh. an another thing about knowing your route is carrying a map. So many parks and state parks, depending on where you're going, they'll, they'll be a map uh, route when you get there. And sometimes they're out of the paper route, but they'll have the map posted. So if you do have your cell phone with you, you could always take a picture of that map. That's another good thing or a lot of parks offer a download before you go to the park. So that's a super important thing. And also there are satellite beacons that you can buy. I know I don't wanna like call it any one name brand, but I know that the Garmin does have one where it's not a cell phone, but it's kind of like an EPIRB when you're boating where mm -hmm. it tracks your location by satellite and you don't need a cell signal. Mm. So that's another way where people can follow you and that they can know your route. Um, there's also uh, apps that you can download or through your phone service that people can track you on your GPS. But again, that's only good if your cell phone is charged and it's working. So we're gonna get more into that on the next couple of slides. But another big thing is checking your weather. So it's important that in the morning or in the afternoon or whenever you're gonna go on your your hike, your walk, that you do check your weather again because the weather's always changing 
And you can get yourself into a situation where you're out on the trail and all of a sudden you have really bad weather. So there are weather apps out there. Um, the weather app that I use is Weatherbug. And it does notify me if there's a storm coming in the next 15 minutes or 10 minutes, it will send me a notification. You could turn those on. So if you are somewhere, um, you know, whether you're in the trail or on the beach or wherever, and it will notify you that a storm's coming so you can get yourself to a safe area in time for the storm to come. Yeah. Like I said, carry a cell phone if you have one. Not everybody has one, but if you have one, Carry it, make sure that it's charged. They do offer uh, secondary batteries now. Let's see if I have mine. I might have mine close by because I do carry. So this is a secondary battery mm -hmm. for a cell phone and you can carry it with you. It will help charge whatever, if you need your phone for however long and it could you know, help you get off the trail um, because you know a lot of cell phones have batteries. Um, that may not last all day if you end up spending out all day out on the trail. Or the other thing is, is your um, your cell phones now have flashlights, which is really nice too, because that mm -hmm. flashlight might come in handy. Uh, if you don't have a cell phone, again, go with a buddy that has one. And you have GPS on your cell phone, so you can turn it on, like I said, and there's apps out there, or you might have that service with your cell phone provider, where somebody in your family that's on your family plan can see your GPS location. So there, there all these things are available out there with your different cell phone providers. This is a really big one because people are so excited to post on social media. It's the same thing when it when you want to talk about house burglaries, like when people are on vacation or anything like that. You don't want to post anything on social media. So if you want to post on social media, make sure you wait until you're finished with your trip. Um, don't send it out to the world on where you're at. Like you don't want to post your, your trail map or anything like that. There, there's a lot of people out there that aren't private and then you're posting it out there and then, you know, you don't know who's looking at your information and then somebody could see where you're at and that could also be dangerous. Or again, it leaves your home open to, to burglaries. Um, so we definitely don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. And it's just something to, um, to keep in mind. Know your surroundings. So we already talked about carrying a map with you or downloading a map or, you know, just knowing where you're going in the park and letting somebody know about it, but plan your route in advance and no alternate routes. It's just like when you're driving, sometimes a trail may be closed because there's a tree down. You may come up to something and you may say, oh, wow, like I didn't realize this part of the trail was closed and you may have to know your way around a different way. So it's always good to like, take a look at the trail. I know another way to get around if you need to get around. Another big thing is to be aware of your surroundings at all times. A lot of people don't, when you're walking in trails, like sometimes there's hills up on the side of you, take a look up, see what's on top of the hill. Um, once in a while, take a look behind you. Mm -hmm. Keep your ears open. If you hear someone coming, keep it moving. Um, this is another really big one that, you know, people love to wear headphones and I get it. Um, I like to wear headphones myself, but there's a safe way to do it. If you do wear headphones, uh, wear one at a time and, and keep it at a low volume. So that way you do have one ear open and then you're able to hear some sounds in the other ear, although you have, um, you know, music or whatever it is that you listen to when you're on your walks or your bike rides mm -hmm. and being able to hear things around you will help you notice something you don't see. Mm -hmm. So when you're in situations, it's not always the hearing, but you see it, you hear it, smell it, you hear it's coming, you get a vibe. It's just really good to, to keep your ears open because that's part of the ways that you can tell if something's going on. Don't offer information that you are alone. Mm. So I have an example that has nothing to do with a trail, but it's a really good example. So I like to travel by myself. So I was out in Pittsburgh and I went to the Pittsburgh Pirates game. I like to travel stadiums. So I got a seat in a really good spot and I was sitting in the front and I was all by myself. And there was these three men sitting next to me. And of course, we'll talk about holding ourselves confident, but one of the men sitting directly next to me started to converse with me. And one of the things he asked me was, 
is like, hey, you know, are you here by yourself? Mm. And of course I was like, oh no, I'm definitely not here by myself. You know, I have a story. I wasn't here by myself. Oh, like I'm a really diehard Pittsburgh Pirates fan, which I'm really not, but that's what I told him. Right. And I was like, my family's sitting someplace else where they could see me, but I'm sitting here because I really like baseball more than they do. So I decided to get a ticket up front. Mm. So I, I had that story in the back of my mind, just in case somebody was going to try to talk to me. So, and then what I did was, is because the game was going in a certain way where somebody was winning, I forget exactly what the score was, but I waited until the three men had got up and they, they walked away for whatever they were doing. And at that point I was comfortable to leave and not have anybody worry about like watching me where I was going. So mm. it's the same thing like this. You know, if somebody stops you to try and talk to you because you are by yourself, you know, one of the best things you can do is maintain a safe, di safe distance. So if there is a situation where you feel uneasy and we're going to talk about that, um, it gives you an opportunity to, you know, have a head start or just be in a better position, a better advancement position, like a more confident position. If somebody tries to have that conversation with you, do not offer information that you're hiking alone or walking, whatever it is. Um, tell them you're with a group or with somebody else. Um, it's okay to do that. Um, you know, don't, and be confident about it. Let them know like, oh yeah, I'm with somebody else. They're just up the trail or, you know, you know what, you can't see them right now. They step behind the bushes, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, if somebody is persistent, you know, uh, you can let them know that, you know, your, your friends are tracked and that they're up ahead. You know, just come up with a reason, you know, that your friends are not there and think it'd be quick on your feet and, you know, just try not to offer any information to somebody that you are alone. So does anybody have any questions about anything so far up to the slide? Mm, I don't think so. I'm, I'm enjoying this though. This is a lot of stuff I didn't think of before. <laughs> well, that's again, you know, we all come from different backgrounds and different experiences. So. You know, some of you may know this and this might be a good refresher and then some of you may not and it's, it's a good refresher. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. So self protection is a big 1. a lot of people ask me this question. So everyone says to me, like, oh, well, you know, I want to carry something because, you know, if I get into a situation, I want to be able to defend myself. So, the big thing that I like to tell people is, you know, if you are going to carry something. You know, make sure you know the laws on what you're carrying and make sure that you're trained on what you're carrying, you know, kind of like law enforcement. Yeah, it's okay that you train something in like a non threatening or non defensive situation. But if you're going to carry something, you know, maybe try to, you know, be in a situation where you're put under some type of stress so you can really practice um, whatever it is that you're carrying um, with you. And that way you have a better idea of like in a real situation. So, you know, it's, if you're going to carry something, you know, obviously keeping it in your hand is always the best place, you know, because if you're keeping it on the bottom of your backpack, mm. or if you're keeping it somewhere where you have to reach and grab it, uh, you may not get to it because if somebody's going to walk up to you and grab you, you're not going to have time to grab it. Um, so, you know, something that is not against the law and that's really simple is an emergency whistle. You know, so I kind of wrote that in the sentence about mm -hmm. not putting it on the bottom of your bag either. So, you know, have it accessible, have it in your hand when you're walking, have it somewhere where, or put it, you know, you might be able to even put it in a lanyard around your, your neck or whatever you feel more comfortable. They have the breakaway lanyards. I actually have one on my desk right here. Um, they have lanyards that just, you know, it's under, these are the ones that we give to the kids in school. So mm -hmm. if somebody happens to yank on it by mistake. You know, it, it comes off. So, um, an emergency whistle is a great thing. Some people carry tracking poles. So, again, tracking poles are great and you can use them, you know, um, to get around the woods and, you know, use them for balance and whatever. Or, again, with animals, if, if uh, animals approach you in the trail, but they can't be taken away from you if somebody knows what they're doing. So, practice your self defense techniques. You know, so that's important too. Walk with confidence. So, again, that's a really big thing. So, don't walk like a victim, walk with confidence. And that means, you know, you're walking with your shoulders back, you're walking with a good stride. Um, 
you know, people who are predators, you know, they prey on people that they feel may be easy targets or maybe easy victims. So it's definitely important that when you are walking, you're definitely walking with a purpose. So I like to say walking with a confidence, walking with a purpose and, you know, just keep it moving. And again, it helps when you're looking around and you're aware of your surroundings and that you have an idea that, you know, you're in a posture and a position where if somebody did approach you, then you could be able to hopefully defend yourself. Animal hazards. There's a lot of different animals that we can run into on the trails. Um, you know, a loose dog is, is one that comes to mind. Somebody maybe don't have their dog on a leash and they're walking them through the park, which we know is illegal, but it does happen. Or you might see something like the other day we saw a fox. So you could see like a fox or you could see, I don't know, we have bears that have been running around lately. Yeah. So especially if you're, you know, walking in the south end of town, it's not, it's not um, unfamiliar to see a bear. We've seen them all over town lately, but remain calm and avoid running away from the animal at first. Unexpected movements can frighten animals and make them feel threatened, increasing the likelihood of an attack. Again, maintain your distance. This is what we've been talking about a few times. Most wild animals will not attack unless provoked or threatened in some way. Avoid approaching or petting the animal and give it plenty of space to avoid an attack or aggressive behavior. And this is a really big one. And I was actually watching a video recently about an animal that was being, they felt like was being fed by somebody else. And you shouldn't feed the wild animals. And when you're in the trail, you wanna make sure you dispose of all your waste properly. So improper food storage and disposal will attract wild animals to your campsite or resting place. So if you are just sitting around hanging out, whatever, and you just decide to hang out, the wild animals will smell that because they're they have a good sense of smell and then they might end up showing up where you're sitting and they really think um you know the feeding the wild animals can change your natural behavior causing them to lose the fear of humans or become aggressive mm. so they have seen that before and in my research we're putting this presentation together you know just animals are getting used to like walking up to people because they're feeding them and then that could be a problem too, because if you don't give them food that they might become aggressive too. Get to know the animals that live in the area as well as the local rules and restrictions. Each region has its own set of animals to encounter and needs for coping with them. So, you know, definitely some of the things that we spoke about, we might see bears, we might see deer. There used to be some wild cows down in the south end of town on some of the trails. Um, you never know what you're gonna see, but keep out for animal tracks, droppings, and claw or antler markings on the trees that can indicate the presence of an animal. So that's always a good thing too. If you do encounter an animal, you know, if you make noise, surprising an animal increases the likelihood that it will feel threatened. If you're hiking in an area where there are bears or other potentially dangerous animals, you might wanna make some noise to alert them of your presence because bears are a little different. Avoid hiking at night as well as dawn and dusk, which I'm gonna talk about. The parks are closed between dusk and dawn anyway. So we shouldn't be in the parks, but again, you might end up in a situation where if you're out there, we're, and I'm gonna talk about this later, you may wanna call the police department and let us know that you're out there and you're making your way back, um, just so we know that you're out there and, uh, and hopefully that you don't run into any problems. So a lot of times that's when a lot of these animals are active and including the bears. So obviously hiking during the day when the animals are less active will decrease your chances of an unsurprising or an unwanted encounter. So a lot of people don't think about carrying a first aid kit. I have them in my car. Actually, I was pulling up to a park once, um, a Lair State Park, I was going on a bike ride. And as I was pulling into the parking lot, I saw a gentleman just fall right in front of me and hit mm. his head right on the ground. So I was really concerned because, you know, there was a couple other people that saw it. And luckily for me, like I, I keep a really good first aid kit in my car. So we were able to get everything done really great. Like, you know, the blanket I had in the back of my car and everything, everything except like to, to keep this guy's neck from moving, but we mm -hmm. were able to get the right help along. 
made up contact in his wife again, who wasn't there. Um, but he was wearing a bracelet that had some information on it. So that's another good thing. You can get like an identification bracelet. If you're out there like biking or hiking by yourself, there's a lot of companies that sell them that have emergency contact information on them. And so that's another like really good thing that you can get. But when you carry a first aid kit, you have to know how to use it. That's really important too. A again, you may not carry the thermal blanket bag and emergency shelter in your backpack, but if you are hiking for an extended period of time or you're on a trail for a while, you might want to consider it mm -hmm. or at least um, keep it in your car. So you're asking what goes in a first aid kit? So yeah. some of the things that are recommended in the first aid kit is antiseptic wipes, antibacterial ointment, assorted bandages, gauze pads in various sizes, medical tape, mole skin, or another type of blister treatment because sometimes people wear the wrong types of shoes or they get wet and then they end up with blisters. Again, ibuprofen or another preferred pain relief medication. You might want to talk to your doctor about that. Insect sting treatment, antihistamine for allergic reactions, nonstick pads, butterfly bandages, tweezers, because ticks are really big in the area. So you might need to get um, a tick off of you. So you might need tweezers, safety temp, safe, ugh, safety pins. A multi-tool is a really good thing to carry for everybody. And then sometimes, again, if you're not really good at first aid, you might want to carry first aid cards that include instructions on how to use the items if you're not familiar. Mm -hmm. If you call 911, if you have an emergency, the dispatchers are really, really good and they are trained in first aid and they will be able to help you through the emergency um, for whatever it is until somebody can get out there to help you. Just so everybody knows, we do have vehicles. We do have police vehicles in Franklin that can assist people in trails. Mm -hmm. We do have a, um, a four wheeled off road vehicle that we can take out in the trails. And I am a member of the bike unit. We do have police bicycles um, that do go out on the trail. So we do have ways and means to um, get out to you in the trails. And, you know, clearly we can call for mutual aid from, you know, the sheriff's department if we need canine dogs or if we need a helicopter, you know, those things are available to us as well. But just know that, you know, a first aid kit is always something that's good to carry with you, you know, if you decide to carry like a little backpack. So I can't help but talk about what happens in the parking lot. So you definitely want to vary your routine when visiting parks and using trails. You don't want to always, just in general, even if you're driving back and forth to work or, you know, you always frequent a store, you want to vary your routine. It's all the same. Like I said before, if you can take somebody with you, that's always the best way. You definitely want to park in a well-lit area and near other people if possible. That will be um, will minimize your chance of becoming a victim. You want to lock your vehicle and hide valuable items. It is a big target for people's cars to get broken into when they're in the parking lots of parks. If somebody is walking by and they see a laptop bag or a backpack on your back seat, or on your front seat or a box, they may feel like they want to go in and, you know, break your window. Definitely lock your cars because most of the time when we have a, a car that's entered, it's unlocked. So it's important that you lock your car. You know, you want to just make sure that you have all of these things covered, you know, uh, try to put it in your trunk or whatever before you get to the park. Because again, somebody might see you get to the park and be like, oh yeah, I have this pocketbook. I'm going to throw it in the back of my trunk. And now they're watching you take these items and putting them into your trunk. So, you know, a lot of our trunk releases are right in our cars where if we open up the door, we can just open up the trunk and get into the trunk. So we definitely want to make sure that if we do have items out there, we want to try to like put them either take them out of your cars or get them out of you before you go there. Um, so again, parks are typically closed from dusk to dawn. So be mindful of your time. Learn self-defense. Here at Franklin Township Police Department, we offer a free women's self-defense class. So it's called the RAD system. It's a basic self-defense program for women only. It's nationally recognized. Um, if you have a daughter going to college or if you're looking for a basic self-defense program to attend, the minimum age is 16 years old. 
And the classes are held at the Community Relations Bureau at 935 Hamilton Street. And I did put our website in the chat for the Community Relations Bureau. And this is what the flyer looks like. Mm. So the classes change all the time. So you see that this was um, the last flyer that we released. So if you look at our website and check back and also on our Facebook or on our Instagram, you don't have to be on Facebook to check our Facebook because I don't have Facebook and I'm able to check the Facebook. So anybody can go on there. And we also have biking with cops too. I'm just going to throw that out there. We do biking in the, in the different parks in town. So that's something that anybody in the community can join up as long as you're high school or older and you bring your own bike. And it's a great way to come out with the police department. Like I said, I'm on the biking unit and you can get to know us and you can ask us any questions that you want. And we do um, cater to all, you know, biking style. So if you're not the best at it, somebody will ride with you and we all stay together and we make sure that everybody enjoys the ride and that everybody stays together. So it's another really great way to come out, get to know some of the trails and uh, meet some people in the community and meet the police department. Hmm. So if the worst happens, so again, if somebody walks up to you on the trail and they want your money, you know, give it to them. It's much better to argue um, to do than argue or get them into a tussle. So if somebody's walking up to you, you know, like we said, you want to try to keep your distance. You want to walk with a purpose. But if for some reason they kind of cut you off in the trail or they catch you off guard, they tell you to give you your, their money, then just give it to them. If you don't have any money, then you could just be honest and say, look, I don't have any money. If somebody grabs you, never allow them to like force you into a vehicle. Do the best that you can to cause a scene, wave your arms, yell. It attracts people. Again, try to fight back the best you can and escape and yell. Just don't give up. That's the best way. So I know this slide has a lot of stuff on it, but before you go, and just in general, just think about what you may need in case you get lost, injured, and can't move. So again, it depends on the on the duration of your hike and everything like that, where you're going, but it's just something good to put out there um, to carry a backpack or a hydration pack. You might want to put a waterproof jacket in there. Wear a pair of good hiking boots or sneakers. Everyone's got their own preference. Some people like hiking boots. Some people like sneakers. So um, gaiters are another good thing. If you want to go out there and you want to reduce yourself from getting scratches or cuts or anything like that, entering your shoes or in the bottom half of your pants. So they're called gaiters. Um, they can stop you know, the ticks from coming in too, which is really great. We talked about a first aid kit. Sometimes people don't think about sun protection. Um, sun protection is super important because not all of the trails have sun protection. And sometimes the sun can come in through the trees. So that may be something that you want to carry. Food and snacks. Everyone thinks, okay, water. But you know what? You might get hungry out there. Maybe grab like a granola bar or something that's small mm -hmm. that you could put into your backpack or pocket in case you do get hungry out there. And then consider what you're packing um, because if it's going to be a hot day, you might want to steer clear of foodstuffs. Instead, look for high energy foods such as nuts, seeds, and trail mix to keep your energy up. And again, we did talk about maps. So these are just some, um, think about what you may need in case you get lost. And a map is definitely a good thing. This is another big one that we spoke about a little bit too. If you see something, say something. Your gut feeling is real. Listen to your intuition, say no and back out of it. So if somebody does, again, try to come up to you in the trail, you can say no to them, you can back out of it. If something's just weird, you know, call 911 and let us know if you see anything. We will send someone out to investigate it. And if it's something that's not really emergency, and if you just say, oh, this was a little off, I saw something on the trail, or, you know, there was this car parked in the lot, and this is their license plate number, um, you know, maybe you could check it out. Our non-emergency number is 732-873-2300. Uh, and we'll send somebody out to take a report. Uh, let us do our jobs. That's what we're here for. Um, we do another thing that we do during our shifts. It's something that we mandatorily have to do. 
for all of the guys and girls that are on patrol, they do have to do park checks. So we try to drive through the parks as much as possible during our shifts. Um, you know, as long as time allows for it, if we're not tied up on calls. So this is just something uh, you may see an officer drive through the park. You can stop him or her and let them know like what's going on. And so um, this is my information where you can contact me. I do wanna click on this because they did catch the suspect that was involved in the last incident mm -hmm. that we had in the trail. So I am gonna pull this up. Can you still see my screen or do I need to reshare? Uh, I just see the questions page still. Yeah, you might need to close that and reshare. Okay, no problem. Let's see. I'm just trying to figure out how to do that. Okay. Share. Okay. Does everybody see that? Yep. Yep. Okay. So this is one of the links that I sent you for the um, Somerset County Prosecutor's Office. So this was just um, the press release from today that the suspect was caught. Oh, well, that's good news. So I am going to. So this was the incident on Monday, May 16th, about the 911 call uh, for the sexual assault for the trail by Blackwell's Mills and Canal Road. And then so they went on to explain everything. So this is the press release. That was the man that was arrested. That was the sketches that were done. So this is really good news. And because I'm not on Facebook, I don't think it's gonna let me do that. But at least we have a general idea of what That's happened. Great. Mm. So, um, so yeah, this is good stuff. Very good. So I just wanna make a note in here that um, so director, our director that is in charge of Franklin Township, Director Mayweather, and all of the people involved in this investigation, just wanna make it clear again that if you see something, say something. Because this guy was caught because somebody else had called out another incident on August 4th. And if that person didn't call the police, and report it, then we may not be in this position right now of catching this this man. So it's really good. Again, that's why I said to see something, say something. So again, everyone who was involved in this investigation just wants to thank everybody mm -hmm. for doing that. And that's that was a big part of solving this investigation. Here's the part right here. So um, my director, Covella Mayweather, uh, yes. You know, we all want to say thank you for getting out there and being vigilant and, you know, you can report things uh, via the stop it app. There is an app out there as well where you can do anonymous, you know, anonymous tips. So. That's excellent. Yeah, all right. That's great news, Dawn. I've been following that case for a long time and it's so glad to hear they finally got him. Yeah. yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, and we definitely saw, you know, increased presence on the trails, sometimes, you know, uniformed, and I'm sure sometimes not. <laughs> um, and uh, it, it was appreciated. And it was great, was great news today to hear this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, thank you. And we, like I said, we did our best. We were get, getting out there on the bikes um, as much as we could, so. And I'm also really grateful for the the women who reported what had happened to them as well. Yeah. Um, and then gave so much information to you guys, just like the person you said on August 4th did. Um, I know sometimes it's hard to come forward with that information, so I'm really grateful that they did. So does anybody have any questions for me while I'm still here? I have a question. Um, okay. So I guess one of the questions I have is, say you're on a trail and you're lost, like you're just completely lost, you're, you've turned around, whatever the mm -hmm. issue is. 
And I'm glad to hear that you guys have vehicles that you can get out there on the trail. But for say you're just out there and you're like nervous, oh, I'm lost. What what should you be looking for? Like I know, like say you're in a city, you maybe be looking for a landmark or something like that. Do you have any recommendations of like you know what exactly should you be saying when you call the the police if you need to? Like because it's hard, you know, you can't just be like I'm by a tree. Um, <laughs> But I, I'm assuming you guys will stay on the phone and kind of help someone out of that situation too. So, absolutely. Yeah. The the best thing I could tell you is is that um, there there are a lot of trails that do have indi markers and indicators on them. Mm -hmm. So just try to like look out for them. But when you call nine one one, we actually um, get a GPS location on your phone. Okay, great. Okay. Yeah. That's so it will give us a, a an ex a, an exact location of where you're at. So they'll be able to see you on the map of where you are and they, they should hopefully be able to walk you out as well okay. or, or do the best that they can. Yeah, that's good to know. And then the, the other question I had is, um, if you're out on a trail and you said before, which I think is a good, uh, I wrote it down. You said it, follow your gut. Like if something seems wrong, it probably is wrong. I think a lot of times though, people get nervous, like, oh, I don't want to buy, I don't want to call if I'm not sure. And, um, so I guess my question is, if if you're out, say you're out on the trail and you're running and you just get like, so you think someone's following you or not, you're, you're not sure, what's like the best like advice you can give? Do you try and like take a different way and see if they follow you and then call or like, what's the, because you know, we don't want to call on people that just happen to be walking behind you. But I feel that way at least sometimes, like I don't ever want to make the wrong decision, you know? Well, it's always better to call. I, I think it's better to call because especially if you're in the middle of a park mm -hmm. i mean it's better for us to like show up there and then have nothing be wrong right. rather than you know have something be wrong and then now we're like backpedaling trying to fix it um mm -hmm. but yeah that's a really great question i think everyone is going to have their own answer to that i think that you have to do what, what works best for you but again you have to trust your gut and i would rather have somebody call when there's a problem or they think there might be a problem and then be like, oh, yeah, there wasn't a problem. But, you know, if you can get yourself to a situation where, like, maybe you're there's a group of people walking, mm. you know, maybe it's like a family or like, you know, right. maybe try to, like, make your way into that group or something. You know, like, I've done stuff yeah. like that before, too. That is a good idea. Like, just, like, act like you're with those people, basically. <laughs> That's right. That's a good idea. Yeah. Or maybe if it's like, again, I'm not telling you to like walk up to strangers, but I mean, there's, <laughs> right. you know what I'm trying to say, like, there's a difference of like finding like a group of people that again, like I said, like maybe there's a family out there or just right. a group of people that are biking, mm -hmm. you know, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to say, but at the same time, you just gotta do the best you can to like protect yourself in that situation with what you have around you at that time. Got it. I think like Tara, what you're asking, like, I think we also, right. You don't want to, um, your unconscious bias might make you feel right. threatened by somebody for no good reason. Right. Sure. Right. So I, I would, I would personally want to be mindful of that. And I think the suggestion of hiking with somebody else is always, you know, like yeah. if, yeah. if you're, if, if that situation, because I would hate to, I understand that we have to go with our gut, but I also know a lot of people get called unreported because of unconscious bias reasons. And right. I just wouldn't want to be part of that. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. just a, it's a personal thing and, you know, you you know like you, you're gonna know like when if you feel like you're in danger you got to do what you got to do regardless. Right. I mean well, yeah. that'll all get worked out later. Yeah, I hear you. How often? I and you don't you don't have to give me an exact number, but just out of curiosity, do you guys get like frequent calls from people on the trails, or is it kind of rare to get that that call? I don't really know because I'm not involved in that. I'm not, I'm in community relations, so I'm not on patrol anymore. So I don't have the answer to that question. Okay. That's okay. I was just wondering. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not really, um, I don't have an answer for that. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's all right. Dawn, I have a quick question. Just getting back to the beginning of your presentation, you mm -hmm. mentioned what to use, um, what a possible device you could use um, so you don't have to depend on cell phone service. What, you mentioned a Garmin project. What was that again? I didn't get that. It's, it's, a, it's a satellite. It's a satellite tracking device. Oh, Let's satellite. Okay. Satellite. I was wondering. Okay. Let me see. Because there are times you don't have service. And uh, so that's good to know. 
That's just like the yeah. regular old GPS, right? Just GPS alone that they used to have pre-cell phones having GPS. Is it the same thing? Yeah, it's similar. They they have them out there. Um, you just gotta search them because they have um different prices and different, you know. <clears throat> let me see. Uh, actually, uh, uh, most cell phones today, I believe, have a separate GPS device. It's not dependent. The, the GPS uh, signal is not dependent on the cell phone towers, uh, and uh, we actually use apps. Uh, these these apps to map our trails. Uh, yeah, that's true. Fact. Uh, but uh, and uh, I found most of the time we get a pretty good signal on most of our trails. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, um uh, you can actually track yourself through uh uh what is it the uh google maps or street maps oh right right apps on yeah. your phone uh and uh we actually uh well, we, we we do a lot of kayaking in the area and uh actually we can actually uh when we're trying to find where we are on a map uh you can actually dictate the GPS coordinates that are on the map into your phone and get a pin for your exact location mm. uh, on that. So, but that's uh, a good idea. But uh, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because actually, Chuck, I was thinking about Diana just a second ago because I wanted to ask Dawn that question. So, Diana, Chuck's wife, he and uh, Diana do a lot of hiking and walking. Um, she had showed us at one of these meetings. It's like a what is it, Chuck? It's like a thing you can throw and it makes a noise. Uh, it's one uh, that the, the thing that uh, the most common thing now is called a hootie. And actually, you can you attach it to your belt and basically it, you, you pull apart and you can throw away the noise sounding thing. Uh, makes a supposed to be 135 decibels. Uh, we've measured it's it's not, but it's loud <laughs> and. Uh, and uh, we've been trying to distribute. Yeah, Vanessa's got one. We we've been trying. Oh, to there we go. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah so yeah, Chuck and Diana gave this to me and Marie. <laughs> I like that. So one of the things, and I don't, I, I mean, I've always thought this is a great idea, and I wanted to see Dawn. Like, what's your, what, what do you think about something like that? I would think that probably is a good deterrent, right? Sure. I mean, anything. I think that's great, actually. You know, anything. Everyone's gonna again. Everyone's gonna want to maybe use something different or carry a whistle or maybe throw something. You know, or have both. You know, because you don't know like what type of situation you're gonna be in. You know, maybe throwing something is easier than trying to blow in a whistle. So <laughs> I mean, there's different situations, or you know, people might be more comfortable. You know, <laughs> using different things because everyone reacts differently in a, in a stressful situation. So. Unless you put yourself in that stressful situation, you don't really know how you're going to act. Yeah, <coughs> true. Very true. Dawn is using mace or pepper spray or bear spray legal. That's a that's a good question. Um, so, it's kind of it's kind of a tough thing because what happens is is like when you use mace, it goes in the air, so you could easily contaminate yourself. Right. So, you know, you just have to be mindful that those types of things, because we have a lot of training with that. So you, you just, again, you have to practice with that if you're, if you're going to carry that. And it, it could be used in a situation where, you know, you can end up contaminating yourself or if the person's strong enough to like grab your hand, they can like turn it and spray it on you. Mm -hmm. So you have to be mindful and of what the things that you're going to carry and what, how it could be used against you. If that person, you know, tends to overpower you or be faster than you. That's but just something to keep in mind. That's why I said that in that slide. Mm hmm. That makes sense. And it's really, I agree with you 100% Dawn. you really have to try to use it before you get into a stressful situation. Cause you're absolutely right. Under stress, people do things, they freeze, they, right. Anything could happen. I know I was out on the trail um, by myself a few weeks ago <coughs> and I had my. I had my hoodie on my pack and I was trimming. So I was like, I, I often will trim as I'm, you know, so I have my shears in my hand. So I'm like, you're good. Like you're good. So <laughs> we're walking along. And then all of a sudden, look, this bicycle comes up from behind me and startles me. And I just jump into the woods. Like, <laughs> oh, I didn't, you know, I'm like, oh, you are not. That's right. Not for you. It was a reaction though. Yeah. Exactly. Oh 
Uh, does anyone, so if any of the, um, the other members have questions, we can definitely take those. If not, I figured Vanessa, maybe I could just check in with the attendees and see if they have any questions while um, Officer Flanders is here. Sounds like a good plan to me. Does anyone else on the on the um, committee have any questions before I switch to see if anyone else has any? All right, let me unmute here. I'm gonna just unmute both at the same time. So we we'll, we have Teresa and Bill on attendees. Do you guys have any questions for Officer Flanders or anything you want to ask her before she goes? No, I don't. Thanks. Okay. No, I don't either. Okay, great. Thank you so much. So I guess um, before we go, the one thing I would like to talk about is um, the upcoming walks on that we're we're gonna do. So right now, so it's scheduled for October first, which is a Saturday. What time? I think we said 930, right? I check my calendar. Uh, what time you want me to be there? I'll be there. Let me see. October 1st, 9 a.m. I have down. So, um, so what we're going to do, you know, everyone uh, promote it. We're going to put out a flyer about it separately, um, but we're going to walk the trail at Middle Bush Park um, with Dawn and she is going to hopefully with a larger group of people that are there, which I think it'll be great weather for. You can really kind of point out some of the hazards you're talking about and give us some ideas. And I think people feel really comfortable, talk, you know, in that kind of situation. So I'm looking forward to that. So we'll, you know, we'll work out more logistics and I know recreation wants to team up with us too. So maybe we can figure out some kind of giveaway or something like that. Great. Sounds like a plan. This was great Dawn. That was so informative. I really, it's like when you hear the topic, like trail safety, you think, oh yeah, it's common sense, but you told me so many things that I didn't like even think about. Cause I don't have to think about them luckily knock on wood, but it's nice to, to know. Thank you very oh, much. Thank you for having me. It was a, it was a nice project to research as well. So I appreciate the invite. Yeah, this is great. Okay. And then we'll talk more before the 1st. All right. Sounds good. Thank you everybody. Thank you. Thank Dawn. you. Hi, Dawn. Thank you. See you later. Yes. Thank you so much. This was excellent. All right. I just couldn't have been better timing for the, uh, oh, for them for catching right? the, um, the person. So that's great. Oh. I agree. That was great. Yeah, that was excellent. So about five or six day. years ago, we were hiking in Alaska in an area where they know knew there were grizzly bears there. Mm. <clears throat> and we bought a bear whistle. And then I got talked into buying the uh, bear spray at, at a uh, it was a, a gun shop or something where I bought it. And the two guys that were in there who probably observe this all the time. We're laughing yeah. saying, by the time you figure out how to use that, the bear's going to be in all over you. Oh no. Yeah. And he said, we find a lot of dead bears with whistles in their belly. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Huh. Yeah, it, I was, <clears throat> Cause the, the spray goes about 20 feet, but a bear charging you can make 20 feet a couple of seconds. So right. it was uh, it was kind of a crazy thing that we we did. It is really interesting when you when you think about it though, because I never like I said, I mean, and I've been lucky, like I kind of like haven't had to worry so much, but I do a lot of field work. And this is when I was still at the county, I had to do a lot of field work on farms. And of all the times I went out on farms, never had a problem. Then one time I just got out of the car and there was a loose dog, but usually the farm dogs are really nice. But this dog was not nice. And as soon as it hit me that like, oh my gosh, this dog is mean. I looked around and I'm like, wow, I'm in the middle of the farm field. I'm alone. Like, you don't think of like what you were saying, Vanessa, like, mm -hmm. you're kind of like, oh my gosh. I, and so I think a presentation like this is so important because it's like, you don't really think of these <laughs> things until you're in a situation. And then, you know, now, luckily I will say this, so I did have, um, there was, so I had like gone out on my side of the car, but there was another girl I was with and she was like a little bit away from the car, but she had brought dog bones with her. And I always made fun of her for, for bringing dog bones. Cause I thought that was kind of crazy, but she threw the bone and the dog went for it. So, I mean, probably yeah. not the best idea, but at least it was something, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it worked, right? It, for that, it was enough time to get back in the car, you know, <laughs> but, but I think this was really good. I think the walk will be really 
really fun too. So we'll make sure we promote it. Maybe we can even um, try to get it to that self-defense class if it happens before October 1st. So we'll work on that. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, Tara, are we ready to move on to the next thing? Yeah. Yep. I'm wondering, so looking at the time, it's eight o'clock. Um, do we want to flip the agenda and, and do the site play a new business, old business? And then if we have time, do the pathways and trails. I'm yes. just thinking we're not going to have time to do both. Yeah, I figured, yeah, I figured probably tonight I, I was like, you know, when I, before I sent you the agenda, I'm like, should I just ask if we should take it off? Cause I figured it would be a while, but I assumed we would probably end up tabling it for tonight. Anyway, I don't really okay. have anything new to report in all honesty. So. Okay. Sounds good to me as well. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds really good to me. You're like, I like <laughs> it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't thinking when I was looking at the draft. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, okay, so let's um, go ahead and move on to the site plan review. Okay, um, so again, this week, we don't really have anything for site plan review. Um, the environmental commission uh, did do its normal reviews, but again, the only thing that we reviewed the last time was um, two warehouse projects. That really seems to be a lot of what we've been reviewing lately. Um, let me look though before I tell you there was none. I just want to check one thing. So one was just an update to uh, a plan that's being built over by World's Fair Drive, and we had talked about that at one of the meetings and said, you know, I don't think this is really going to pertain to us, like in terms of trails. The other one that came before us, um, it's loading up right now. I just want to make sure this is right. Okay, so the Environmental Commission heard this at the last meeting and it's a proposal for two smaller warehouses um it's located though on weston canal road so that was the thing that was interesting are are you all familiar with the um it's called atlock nursery i think is the name of it it's on it's across from the canal uh it's on um they used to be a sod farm are you guys familiar with that property on weston canal road so, you, you know, Weston Canal Road is narrow. Um, it's obviously right by the canal. So there is a proposal very early phases phase uh, for two smaller warehouses um, that would have, you know, 52 parking spots. It looks like um, there's currently a residential building shed and greenhouse on the property. Those will be knocked down. Um, the plan proposes to fill at the front and cut into the hill to provide ground level warehouse. Um, two bioretention basins are proposed at the front. The ground will slope steeply to Weston Canal Road. Also proposed is an underground infiltration basin under the front parking area. A green roof is proposed and some areas of a green wall. So in terms of the uh, stormwater management and green infrastructure and sustainability, it's a great plan because they are proposing a lot of things that a lot of developers don't propose like the green wall. wall green roof and green wall and the bioretention basins. The problem really is the location, which that's the, for the planning board and zoning to decide because of the road. It's only a two lane road. There's gonna be trucks coming in there. It goes directly to 287 in one direction. So it could cause some backup. Um, but in terms of trails, what we're looking at for, I mean, of course the, the DNR, the canal path is right across the way from it, but there's really no way there would be able to make a connection from that property anyway, because it's, you know, cut off by that guardrail. So you'd have to go down Weston Canal Road and follow it to the path, which is already kind of a precarious area for walking and biking. You would have to get on the path from, you know, where if you're going towards Manville and you cross over the bridge, but there's that very steep turn, you know, that tight turn around there, you'd have to go from this site and somehow make your way up to there to get into it because you couldn't really cross over. So it's off of Weston Road or you Weston said Weston Canal. Road? Weston Canal, yeah. I can bring up, uh, let me bring up a map to show you. Let me just get it up here. <clears throat> But that was the only other one re we reviewed. And again, it's, you know, from the environmental commission, what they're reviewing for is making sure um, 
you know, that they're actually doing like stormwater and lighting and everything in a, in an appropriate fashion. But um, I'm going to show you this map so I can show you exactly where it is. I just want to get it up here. Okay. Let me share my screen. There. Okay. All right. So this is the site right here, just to give you some kind of this right here, is it? And so you can see the Amazon factory is over here. This is Randolph Road right over here. So if you're going this way, you're heading towards 287. And I'm just mm -hmm. gonna move it. Here's Verapath, just for your reference. Yeah. And then this So is where here. is it? I don't see it. It's right here. here. The blue? Yep. I think that's the last thing we need is another warehouse in uh, particularly near the canal. Right. Yeah. I appreciate that they're trying to green it up with the roof and right. all of that, but the, the uh, town of Franklin has really turned into a massive set of warehouses there everywhere. Yeah. It's, um, to put anything near the, that beautiful Western Canal itself and the road is crazy to me yeah i'm not sure what the status is with the i know it's going to go before the planning and zoning board they're probably i'm sure having to submit some additional information i'm sure but um the only you know the environmental commission does its review and that's what you know but i think that their sentiment was kind of concern as well just because of the location yeah where is the um, the new the uh, huge uh, warehouses that are uh, come on they're like the the um, oh the by canal walk and stuff you mean is that canal walk places yeah yeah uh, so that Where's... would oop that would be not nope they're further this way. Uh, let me see. The Amazon building oh, is gigantic. Okay. Yeah, the Amazon. So there's Amazon. So Canal Walk is which one is Amazon? That giant one. This that one here. One. Yeah, that's not the nuts. Amazon. Um, the so this yeah. is going to be right near there. Yes, it's Amazon is behind it. This is not the right place I wanted to show you, but this Schoolhouse Road as you're heading down here. See, this is New Brunswick Road and Elizabeth mm -hmm. Ave. Um. Metlers, I think we're still too far at this spot. Randolph. So here's Canal Walk. And I think, I don't know exactly where the spot is that they're proposing those warehouses, but I know it's right around Canal Walk, somewhere in this vicinity. Oh, they're going to love that. But that's like the location to there. So again, here's school, here's that turn I was telling you. Well, you guys mm -hmm. all know about this, not that I was telling you about it, but this is that turn where a lot of people, you know, get upset because they have to go around here and the cars are speeding by. And I think the the crosswalk is like right around. Well, actually, I don't even know if it's a crosswalk. And then we're it's back. It's been rumored that they were gonna turn that into a, um, you know, a flashing light and mm -hmm. like the, you see in Colonial Park. Yeah, I think the town has been working with the county on that because um, it's a county road to get to, you know, kind of get that put in there. So I know that they've been, you know, having discussions at least about that. I don't know where it spans exactly, but I think, yeah, they've been talking about it. So that's it. So, but in terms of a trail, uh, I don't know that there's really, yeah. you know, there's not really much of a connection there. Um, Cause to cross from, I mean, to make a trail that crosses road, you couldn't really, and there's no here. sidewalks down there. There's no sidewalks. No. There's a no, shoulder, no. but it's tight. A shoulder is tight, especially now if you're talking about a big truck coming. But you said the environmental commission, they're going to look at like, as far as the, the flooding in that area and the, the roads to sustainability and. Yeah, so the, the impact on the per pervious ground and things like well, that. Yeah, so the planning board will look at the, um, you know, the actual traffic counts and like, can the road handle it? Stormwater management. 
the things that the environmental commission is charged with looking at is, you know, um, are they doing enough sustainable practices on site? Are there better ways to produce energy or uh, contain stormwater? So that's what, you know, their charge is to look at it. The planning and zoning board though, will look at, you know, stormwater volume. Where is it going to? How's it being treated? Uh, they will definitely look at the level of service on the road and if there's any changes on there. So they will look at that. It hasn't been before them yet because I'm sure it's still in the staff review time, but I definitely would say, you know, we'll keep an eye on it and see when it gets to the planning or zoning. Okay. And Tara, like there's no, like on the back side of this blue line there, that's not, um, that's just a property line there. That's not like, um, a road. No, that's just property line. Yep. Okay. Okay, all right. And so that's all we had at the last meeting. So it's been kind of not too, not too many things, not too many reviews as of late. Okay. Um, let me go back to the agenda. Um, new business. A reestablishment of demolition plots at Negri Napote. Uh, so Chuck is really working on that um, more than anybody. Chuck, you have anything to report? Uh, not really. It's, it's really hot to work out there right now. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, I, I guess the only thing was uh, that uh, I've been looking for methods that we might be able to use to uh, restore the pollinator area. And of course, uh, we've discussed this before about actually putting in trails, uh, you know, cross shale trails uh, uh, around some demonstration plots and through, through that uh, uh, along the ridge to that trail. Uh, I also sort of came to the conclusion that we need to think about maybe using biological controls to control some of the invasives in that area and uh it uh so i actually went to the environmental commission mm -hmm. to ask them to uh uh see if they would approve this the, these are uh organisms that that specifically affect spotted knapweed which is one of the main invasives in that area and the commission uh, uh which is it's a very busy commission they actually uh, we had enough discussion that they felt like they, they should approve it uh, uh, using these. Uh, what we were, wa wanted to do was release a USDA-approved uh, insects that would specifically attack the napweed. These are natural predators of the napweed. Uh, but uh, Ted Chase and, and and I also felt like this is something that should be considered by the environmental uh, by the open space committee as well. Uh, and then uh, I guess uh, 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 Tara contacted Bob Bornlocker and uh, 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 Bob Puskas, and uh, I guess the sense Tara was they thought it, they thought it might be a good idea, but they didn't want to do it without further review and consultation. Uh, right. Yeah. So, so I did bring it to the Bob Puskis, who's the chair of open space. And I also brought it to Bob Warnlocker, our township manager. They both thought it's definitely, you know, an idea looking at worth looking into. Of course, the main thing is that I think in order to release the, um, the insects, like, so that they actually can do their job, they would have to be done right Chuck by like the end of September. Uh, uh, by mid September. By mid September, and, uh, yeah. So well, we've lost the window on that, uh, and and uh, uh, it would be something that we would uh, try to do next year. What I would like to to do though, because we're going to have to make these presentations to the open space committee and 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 uh, as well. Uh, I would appreciate it if if somewhere down the road uh, in the next few months the trails committee would consider this as well and either you know move to approve or disapprove it just to provide ammunition i guess uh for uh uh either approving or disapproving this project uh so uh you know it's uh 
up to you whether you would want to be involved in this. It's uh, it it really is affecting you know the environment around our trails, and I, I feel like it's important from that point of view to have a trails committee think about it. But uh, yeah. anyway, I would just like to ask the the committee to consider it. Uh, we can show a short video, a six minute video uh, from uh, Idaho State University about biological controls. And uh, uh, I can also give information about uh, permitting or the lack uh, or the lack of permitting that's uh, been required for for doing this. And uh, so. yeah, I think the the idea is that we'll add it to the September and October trails and open space advisory committee agendas for like an act like a formal not a formal but you know a more in depth presentation Chuck from you. We can show the video. We can talk about it, um, and then, you know, see how it goes from there. Yeah, I I, I just have failed. Uh, the 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 problem is, no permits are required for this. I mean, this is a USDA pro, DA approved uh, program that's in place in many of the western states. And uh, my my concern in bringing it to the environmental commission was that you know it's already approved for for use in, in the area as far as we know but you know nobody has ever done it before right. in new jersey and uh, uh i didn't feel comfortable just going ahead and doing it mm -hmm. without having further consultation with members of the public you know members of the of the relevant co committees that might have overlapping concerns about this in the township so. Yeah, I think I think that's smart. I think the main thing is, is that, you know, we just I think everyone wants to make sure that, you know, before we do something that we've never done before or before we release anything onto the town property, we just want to make sure that, you know, we have time to like research it and look at it and have everyone approve it. And then if if everyone wants to do it, just like, you know, we went into the prescribed burn, we can definitely do something like that. But we just got to make sure we have time to to do it. So anyway. That's that's my drift. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we can get that, Vanessa. Is that okay on the next on the September agenda? Of course. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, the local health local health assessment and action plan. So for anyone that has filled out the local health assessment. Um, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. It is live right now. I had sent the link around. So now it's in a digital version that you can fill in. So you don't need to worry about the paper copy. Um, if you have a chance to fill it in, please do that because the more, you know, feedback we get from across the township, the better our assessment and our action plan is going to be. So, so far, I think we have collected almost 100 surveys so far, and the digital one only went live a few days ago. So we do have quite a few paper copies. Um, but Safi and I are going to uh, have a table at the week of the people on um, Saturday for just a few hours. Uh, she did have a table at some of the Franklin days. There's a table at the senior center for their feedback um, and we keep pushing it on Facebook and I'm sending it to all of our committees and everything like that. So um, once we get all these surveys in and the next step after that is to hold some focus groups. So we're kind of in the phase right now where we're trying to think where are some good places to hold focus groups. Um, we want to make sure we get, you know, representation from every group as many as we can possible across the township so that's kind of what we're working on next but um but yeah so it's moving along so far so good great thank you um Sarah, before we move on is that something what's the time frame would you be able to approach like parents groups at schools and stuff like that regarding the health assessment or is it due before then no, so we have the technical assistance grant goes through March, so we have an, all that time to do it. Um, now we need to develop an action plan by March, but our goal is, you know, we definitely are going to be doing some surveys and we'll get the survey informa information out to the school so they can get it out. But a few of the focus groups we're hoping as long as we get permission will be held at the school. So, you know, we'll be able to get parents groups involved and, uh, um, I know Safi was able to get some of when it was paper surveys, like handed out at the camps, the, you know, the summer camps and things like that. So. 
Yep, so we're keeping that in mind. That's good. Okay, maintenance call. Maintenance call, yes. So I had a brief maintenance call with Carl this month. Um, I asked about the benches. He said a bunch of deliveries had come in that day and he had suspected that some were the benches. So he was gonna go, you know, get the deliveries and let me know what he has. But I think that they're in. Um, what else? He wants to know, uh, which I said, we have to have a meeting of the grasslands committee, I guess, or someone, but something to think about. He does want to have a schedule for mowing because mowing's coming up soon. So, well, I guess we should talk about this here because it's coming up very soon. So they are willing to do the mowing. They have the new mower. They need the correct mower to do it. They got that equipment. Um, so we didn't have a burn last year because of the weather. So I, my assumption is, is that we're probably going to have to have them mow the entirety of both properties. Again, we did apply for the burn. Um, upcoming, so hopefully we can have that, but I would assume that's what we're planning on doing. Does that sound wrong to anyone or, or what do you think? Does what part sound wrong? About mowing the entirety of both properties. So last year we mowed the entirety of both properties because it was like going to be better for the burn and there was a lot of overgrowth, but then we didn't have the burn because of the weather. So now nothing has been done. So I think both properties in their entirety need to be mowed again. And then hopefully we'll be able to do the burn in, you know, January or February. I mean, are there, I don't think there's any problems with that. I mean, I don't see any problems. What do you understand. think, Chuck? Does that sound like the right course of action or again, or should we be like delineating certain areas for them to mow? Chuck, you're muted. Check. You're muted, Chuck. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I think that's a, uh, probably the best plan. My uh, only, I, I, I do want to think about one thing, and that is that the mowing that they did last year, uh, they mowed down with these flail mowers, they mowed down a lot of the Bradford pear and autumn olive trees. Mm -hmm. Uh, and which really, we, we knew that this wasn't the best plan because what happens with these plants is that, uh, you get sucker growth growing up and actually the sucker growth of uh, these things is coming up really fast. Mm. So instead of one trunk for the tree, now you've got six or eight trunks and you'd, you'd be amazed at how fast these things are growing. They're actually higher than the tall grass at this oh, wow. point, even though they were mowed at ground level. Uh, mm -hmm. the, really, the best procedure would have been to simply cut the trunk and immediately apply systemic herbicide to the cut trunk, like within 30 seconds. And that okay. kills the root system and so on. But I think, I don't know, I get the sense now, maybe the best thing to do is to just go ahead, do the mowing again, Hope we get a burn and hope that the burn actually will will kill most of these sucker the sucker growth that's coming through. Uh, I don't see any other way around at this point. Right. Now if Basically, we do that mow and then we get a prescribed burn going, we might actually make you know some good progress on the invasive. Yeah, then, uh, it's gonna know. be incremental. It, but yeah. uh, I think I think that's uh okay. probably the best best thing to do from now. Okay. And uh, he now last year we had him do the mowing right around September 1st. Um, I, I think that was because it was out of the nesting bird season. I think that's probably still the more appropriate time or is or no. Uh, we might want to push it back a little bit. Uh, if if but uh, the, the, the reason is that you wouldn't want to mow in, in the pollinator area, for example. You wouldn't want to mow before the pollinator plants have had a chance to set seed. Okay. Uh, uh, into the ground. Uh, I, but quite frankly, given this drought, we don't have much pollinator plant. Right. Flowering uh, there. Uh, the only major flowering flower we have is spotted knapweed, 
Right. <laughs> and uh, there's it's uh, interesting biology, but but. Uh, uh, Do you think so, October yeah. is better? Like early October. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, let me let me look and see if the, there's a possibility that some of these plants that have not been able to flower because of the drought might actually flower late. Okay. Uh, and and uh, but uh, I think we can figure that out in the next couple of weeks if if that's enough time to think about the scheduling. Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds good. Okay, um, moving on to old business, the GPS mapping of trails. Um, so I haven't received any update from AT. I know he's still working hard on getting the maps done. We still have some trails that need to be mowed, uh, mowed that need to be GPS. Um, so, you know, it's been hard. It's been a hard month, obviously, with the incredible heat and the drought and everything. So, Again, if you get out to uh, walk any of your trails, just please put that in the spreadsheet that we have, the Google Google sheet, um, or you can just let me know and I can put it in there if that's easier for you. And AT continues to work on uh, the map, so you know we're we're moving along a little slower this month, but we're getting there. <laughs> okay. Um, trail walks. I know we have the October 1st one coming up um, before then. Yep. Chuck, would you, you have, are there any more of the 55 hikes you have going? Uh, I, I would like to schedule some for the fall. Uh -huh. uh, I'm uh, just having uh, scheduling problems at the moment. I think we can work it out. I think we can do a few. In the fall, I'd like to do them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and so on. Uh, and uh, uh, also there are these uh, uh, thinking about doing walks for these people in the that Highland, uh, Princeton Highlands neighborhood. Right. Uh, to familiarize those people with the trails, uh, we need to get in touch with uh, what is it, Rohit Gupta. Okay. I haven't heard from him. Uh, since then, but uh, uh, and so on. Um, yeah, I I, uh, I don't think we I, I can schedule anything till you know for mid September or late September after our next trails meeting. Uh, so uh, why don't we try to work out a schedule for then? Okay. Yep, that's is there fun. anybody else? Is there anybody else who was wanting to schedule a hike? Okay. So, um, yeah, let's Chuck. Maybe maybe you, let's you and I connect before the next trails meeting, and we can kind of look some dates. Sure. Yeah. Glad to. Yeah, I want. I definitely want to. Um, you know, I know we've been talking about kind of like just expect like get like the tow path, getting people out there who don't know what's near their houses. Like that's something I personally yeah. would really like to make sure people can figure out. Like kind of thinking about Tara with the um the local health assessment, right? You know, right. Um, just like people not under knowing what's in their neighborhood even to access. Mm -hmm. So um yeah, I think we can have that intention as well when we're protecting our locations for for our hikes. I think that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next item is stewardship uh, at grasslands. Um, so I submitted the application for the prescribed burn um, and uh, we're just kind of waiting to get the approval on that. But in speaking with George Effinger, our fire steward, he seemed to think that it was no problem. and. He had really hoped to get out here and do the burn, but because of the weather and um, the other, I guess, applicants that have been on the list for a long time before us, we just couldn't get the burn done this year. Um, but the good news is he said that we would get moved up to the, you know, higher end of the list because we didn't get any burn last year. So we should get them at Negri and uh, and um, John Clyde Memorial Native Grasslands Preserve. 
So between that and the mowing, which we just talked about, and then next month we'll talk about the biologic controls. I think we are really, you know, making some progress on the stewardship at the grasslands. Thank you. Um, the last item we have is the updates on trail conditions from us. Um, I can get started. So, um, the Franklin Park natural area and the Bunker Hill natural area are looking pretty good. The graffiti on the uh, fence around the parking lot um, at Bunker Hill was painted over. It was painted in white, but it was painted over. So that was nice. Okay. Um, and yeah, like the main, the main open paths on the yellow trail are, are being well mowed. And then just like the trails in the woods part are, are a little, um, you know, needing more maintenance, you know, from, from volunteers like me. Um, um, and the back trail, the, the brown trail in the middle by the, by the stream, um, there's a section of it that's just really overgrown. Um, and, uh, that hasn't improved since okay. my last report about, it, and I haven't been able to address that at this time. Okay. But nothing major, nothing major for, for um, public works to handle. And then, then the, the side going from the stream to um, Old Fleet Road, um, South Clitobus Road, that's looking, that's being well. That's really like they did a nice job. It's pretty wide. Sometimes the overgrowth really kind of comes in and it's, it's not. So Good. we're doing a nice job with that. Okay, great. Uh, I have been able to get out to Butler Road trails uh, or the Simons and Brook Trail. So I don't know what, what condition they're in. Uh, I did, I have received some complaints about the Yellow Trail, Butler Road. Uh, it's not been mowed. And, but uh, uh, I mean, the last, last uh, meeting, uh, Terry, you said that Public Works is having difficulty staffing these. Yeah, there are, there, yeah, so, but I'll I'll get the word to them again uh, that the yellow trail needs mowing. Well, I'll, I'll I'll try to get out there and look at it. I'll I'll let you know. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, okay. About it. One thing though is that uh, uh, our granddaughters really like the children's trail in Middlebush Park. Mm, oh yeah, yeah. They love going on on the uh, zip line, and they love climbing on the bear and the rocks around there. But quite frankly, it's not being maintained. And I I, I don't know who maintains it. This this Parks and Rec have their own uh, maintenance staff. No, it's a, or, it's or is it all public it's, public it's, works? Yeah. It's all CPW. Um, I actually went out with my string trimmer, and, and I mean, the, the, the grass is up around the the uh, uh, the the bear statue and the climbing rocks, and and uh, 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 it's it tall grass along the trails and so on. And that that is a special place. I, I really think you know it. it uh, I really and it, it, the athletic fields are maintained. Of course, a lot of them are astroturf. <laughs> But there, right. even the, the grass between the astroturf gets mowed and the baseball fields get mowed. Uh, but uh, uh, I really like to see some attention played. And it's, they just, it's more than just running a mower through the center of the trail. They got to go out with string trimmers and trim the tall grass from around these sculptures that the kids like to climb on and, right. uh, and around the zip line that uh, they, uh, uh, you know, want to get on. And uh, so, got it. So, okay, thank you. Oh, and and Anne Marie, they uh, have mowed the area around the uh, east side of the pond. Oh, nice. There is a path. There is a mowed path there. I don't know how far it goes, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, from 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 the uh, path along the the dam, you know, uh, I could I could see down that they had they had mowed at least. Part way down in that area, but uh, I hope that if it stays relatively cool, I'll, I'll check it out Saturday. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Chuck. Okay. 
And any any other reports? I don't, Terry. You didn't paint any uh, markers, did you? I didn't. Any? It was so hot. It was so hot that I just was like, wow. Um, no, I agree. But just let me know if I you will. know. Maybe we look up uh, and, and we can do that. I'll let you know for sure. Um, we'll get out there very soon. Yep. Yeah. I agree. The weather is just it hasn't cooperated. Oh, so yeah. terrible. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, not going out. Yeah. By the way, I haven't had a potential Eagle Scout contact me. Did did he copy you as well, Tara? Uh, Tara Holzer's son. Uh, I don't know. And uh, we, we might be able to enlist. He's looking for a project. And I and I sent an email saying, "Well, let's go out and walk through some trails. Let's talk about it." Okay. You know, one thing you might be able to do is, is mark trails. That would be great. Uh, and you know, do it do it in a eagle worthy way. You know. Yes, that would be excellent. Uh, yeah, we can do that. I can I can definitely go with you on that too if you want. Yeah. Uh, so uh, anyway, I'll, I'll be in touch. Be, be in touch about it. But uh, okay. Right. That would be great. Okay. Um, so we've we've completed our agenda. Anything before we make a motion to adjourn? Okay. Would, um, would someone like to make a motion? Well, just a, a off topic. Well, if you can hold on just a second, I just have some off off topic things. Yeah. One uh, quick property taxes came in my mail today. <laughs> <laughs> They've been delayed, but they they finally okay. arrived. Also, uh, hey, if it, if if, if uh, you want some cheap entertainment, uh, Somerville. Saturday evenings, they have free um, music on Division Street, oh, that, yeah. that walkway mall. Mm -hmm. So six to nine, they have free music. You can go to Villagers Brewing Company, get a craft brew, bring chairs, and and the parking meters stop at seven o'clock. So after seven o'clock, you don't have to put any, you don't have to feed the right. meters. And lastly, there's a local deli that's going to be uh, uh, featured on, um, you know, Guy Fieri. Yeah, he has that show Diver. Right, yeah. so uh, Joe's Meat Market in Southbound Brook. Yes, I heard about. He's going to be featured. That's going to be featured for this Friday at nine o'clock on the Food Network. So awesome! That's going to be out. cool. Yeah, awesome. I heard about that. So you might want to check that out. Some local place. Then then everyone goes there after they nice. have seen it on TV. Nice. That's it for me. Um, oh, speaking of that, though, are there any uh, events coming up in Franklin that we should be aware of? Like the Franklin days, there's. I know they had like this year, right? There was like multiple Franklin days. Tara? Yes, there was. Yeah. So, well, the 1st thing that's coming up this weekend on Saturday, the 13th, as I mentioned, is the week of the people. It's at name and Williams Park. Um, let me just get the, uh. What's the name in Williams part? I just want to look it up here because I want to make sure I tell you the right. Information, um, uh, I'm sorry, let me look, but I know I'm going there for a table, uh, but I believe it's like a celebration. Um, and they have music there and, uh. It's supposed to be really fun for that area. So I think it's from, I want to say it's a long day. It's like 2 to 6, maybe. But if you go to our website, I'm sure there's information about it there. I'm trying to find it right now as we speak. Um, so that's that and then Franklin days. I'm on the website here. Let me see if I can. Find exactly when those are. Because Franklin days this year are split up into multiple days instead of just the 1 big day. So I know there's at least another 1 coming up. Okay, I just know that was something that we would want to, you know, I guess we have to figure out where we're going to table, you know, um, and promote the trails. Yeah, I'm trying to see if I can find information about this. It should you would think of you right. Okay. Give me one more second. I'm just trying to see if I can find anything here. Quarterly um, taxes, no. Oh, the biking with cops application is open. Yeah, the news. Okay, so let me look and see what I can find okay. about Franklin Days, and I'll get back to you guys. And also about this week of the people. Um, but yeah, those those are coming up. And, and Tara, what time are you planning on being at the week of the people? 
Uh, between one and three, Safi and I are both planning on going right now. Um, but you know, that's the plan right now that we're both going. So one of us at least will be there for a hundred percent sure, but we're going to be there between one and three. Okay. Oh, here. Okay. So it's advertised. Let me just, uh, give me one second. Of course, now the computer's going super slow. Uh, okay. So week of the people is. Partners with Somerset County Action Program and the Hamilton Street Business District to celebrate its 50th anniversary anniversary with three family friendly events. The week long celebration will have live entertainment, spiritual gatherings, vendors and activities designed to bridge the gap between life, love and the community. So the three events. Uh, I just want to make sure. No, nope. okay. So. It's hard to find like the information here, but I'm going to be there between 1 and 3 for a week of the people. So that'll, but I'll, I'll get the information. I'll send it to you guys like in more detail. So we know what we're doing here. Okay, and I see like, a, I just looked at the Franklin days the, 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 the last Franklin day is September 24th. Okay, uh, band to be determined. I think, yes, that is because um, 1 of the days was more for like uh, committees and things like that. And that might be that September. I think August, yeah, August 2nd, it said safety municipal vendors. Okay. Yeah. Oh, August. Oh, that was on the national night out. That was 1 of the Franklin days. Okay. Right. Yeah. And September 24th, but it says township and nonprofit vendors. So, yeah, September 24th is from 1 to 5. Okay, so yeah, that might be something we can look into, and that's going to be at the um, is that at the gazebo? The gazebo, yep. Okay, can you can you find out if that's something that we'd be allowed to, uh, you know, hand out like trail maps and stuff? Yeah, you want to have like a table there, basically. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, I will find out. Awesome. All right. All right. Um, can would someone like to make a motion to adjourn? I move that we adjourn. I second. All in favor? Aye. Anyone? Okay. All right. No, any, no opposed, no abstained. All right. Um right. our meeting is adjourned. Thank, Thank you all. You. And Thank and our everybody. next meeting Bye -bye. is September. What is it? Is it September? Uh, let's say 14th. Uh, that sounds right. Let me just double check here. September 14th. Yep. Okay. All right. Have Thank a good one. Thank you. All right. Have a good night. Yeah, you too. Bye.